All right, so I guess if we're working as a team today, as a partnership, I'm going to need to brief you on the idea. So any concept, any creation starts with an idea, and today is no different. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and make an elevator. However, this elevator is going to be different from what you've come to expect in Minecraft. See, Minecraft is quite a clunky game, especially with pistons. You know, they start and they stop and they start and they stop, kind of like an engine. And we're going to try and do something a little bit different from that. So what we want to do is we want to make a smooth elevator. So an elevator that ascends and descends seamlessly. Very much like a real life elevator. Okay, so I have a general idea of how this is going to work, but it's subject to change. Anyway, uh, basically what I'm thinking we're going to do is we're basically going to stick a bunch of entities together and hope for the best. Um, so here's what it's going to do. First of all, we have an armor stand, right? Now the armor stand is kind of going to act as kind of like a parent between the other two entities, and it's going to kind of stick them to position. Now the next thing is a shulker. Now a shulker is actually very, very important. I love the noises they make, by the way. <laughs> um, shulkers are very, very important because um, they actually have an attribute that pretty much no other entity has ever had before in the history of Minecraft, and that is is that they are an entity, but they have the collision box, the hitbox, of a block. Now the only other entity I can think of is a boat, and those are horrible to work with, but shulkers are pretty nice to work with. Now the reason that we want the shulkers cool collision box is because uh, entities can be smooth, they are not fixed to any block grid, um, and he has a hitbox, so that's really, really nice. Now the last entity is falling sand. We're going to actually use falling sand to disguise this shulker as a regular block. So we're going to basically merge all three of these together and we're going to be able to create this uh, smooth solid block that moves up and down seamlessly. All right, so now we have stuck them all together and I can actually just wrap to this guy. I can stand on him, I can ram into him and it acts pretty much exactly like a block except secretly it is in fact obviously an entity. So if I actually just go into spectator mode, you can actually take a look inside as you can see. There's this secret little shulker hiding inside the block, but uh, to everyone else it just looks like a block and it acts very much like a block. So now that we have that done, uh, how exactly are we going to go about moving this guy up and down in a realistic way? So one thing that came to my mind was perhaps we could use something like levitation. So let me spawn a new mob, which is actually very similar to the previous mob, except we've replaced the armor stand with a villager. So let's actually levitate this guy and see what happens. So he will obviously ascend, as you're expecting, and then he'll drop. Now, there's actually two reasons that I'm not going to use this and why I don't really like it too much. And the first is, as you just saw, whilst the ascension is actually pretty nice, the descent is very rapid and it doesn't match the speed of the ascension, which I don't like very much. And secondly, it doesn't really follow any precise unit of measurement. It doesn't travel one block a second. Um, it kind of sort of goes as it pleases. Rightio, so instead of levitation, we're going to be using teleportation to move this guy up and down. Gradual teleportation. So we're actually going to move this guy in increments of 0 0.05. And the reason I choose 0 0.05 is because 0 0.05 is a nice number to work with. So Minecraft has game ticks, as you're probably aware. So it actually has 20 game ticks per second. Now, repeat command blocks or clock command blocks actually fire 20 times a second. And 0 0.05 just happens to be 1 20th of a second. So that means that every second, this guy will teleport up one block exactly, and vice versa will teleport down one block. So that's a really nice way to get this guy to be moving consistent distances. All right, so let me show you this in action. So if I press this green button over here, you notice this guy starts to teleport up. And if we do the red button, if I actually press it, there we go, you can see that he starts to move downwards. Now if we press the grey button, he'll stop moving altogether, like so. And this is actually pretty simple. So as I just explained, this guy is being teleported in increments of 0 0.05, but how do we control the upwards and downwards movements? So it's actually pretty simple. So over here, I'm going to explain how the tags of this thing works. So this guy actually has two tags to control stuff. So first of all, we have Ella's stand. That's just basically like a name to specify that this is the stand we need to be targeting. But it also has a second tag, which can be one of three things. So it can be Ella stand down, so when it's moving down. It can be Ella stand stop, when it's not doing anything. And it can be Ella stand up, when it's travelling upwards. 
We then have two command lines, one for controlling upwards movement and the other for controlling downwards movement. As you can see, this guy is currently not moving. That's because the second tag is set to stop. And because it's set to stop, he can't move because these two commands actually rely on the existence of the LS stand up or LS stand down tag being on that arm stand. And because it's not, they can't do anything. They can't, they have nothing to execute based off. But if we were to overwrite it, for example, we could overwrite it with the down tag, you can see he starts moving and the Ellis stand stop tag will cease to exist. And likewise, we can just rewrite it onto that and it works as you'd expect. Okay, so that works pretty nicely, but a problem arises when you're actually trying to ride the elevator. Now, going downwards, it works a treat. It works exactly how it's supposed to. Let's just show you that in action. So if I just hop on, as you can see, I can walk around, it goes down, it acts exactly how it's supposed to. Everybody is happy. The problem arises when you're actually trying to go upwards. So the problem when you're going upwards is that when you try to stand on it, you're actually sifted through the floor and cannot stand on it for the rest of the journey which is, of course, a pretty big problem. All right, so there's two parts to this solution. So the first thing is we just teleport the player upwards as the uh, elevator moves upwards. So let's try that and teleport this upwards. Now, this works, kind of, but the problem is is that it's very jolty. You can't really move very easily, and it's not really... doesn't look very nice. So my second part of the solution is basically just to give the player a little bit of levitation. So if you actually give the player a levitation level of 255, something interesting starts to happen. And that is, is that the player actually stops moving. So that jittery effect is actually because the player, as they're being teleported upwards, they're also being sort of affected by gravity. So if you give them a little bit of levitation, they stop doing that. So let's actually try that yet again, this time with the levitation. So stand on it, share it out and give it. As you can see, um, it's actually a lot smoother than before. It's not perfect because the player is actually floating a little bit, but it's much, much better than before. Okay, so I've changed one tiny little thing just to make it feel a little bit more elevatory. So I've actually substituted the falling sand for something else. So um, now we've actually gotten rid of the falling sand. That's no longer in here. So reduced this whole thing by one entity, which is always nice. So this is actually now a retextured or a remodeled diamond hoe placed on the armor stand's head to act as the disguise block. I think it looks pretty nice. I also used the opportunity to add these little arrows. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tidy all of this area up and give it a nice final demonstration of this elevator in action. Well, alrighty then, we've fixed everything up, it's all tidy, and uh, this mysterious wall has been built up. It's, in fact, the elevator shaft. Wow. Um, so yeah, let's test this out. Now, I didn't really know what to do with the buttons, so I kind of had to haphazardly place them a little bit, but they work. Um, Alright, so let's test out. Just press the green button to go up. Now, the upwards journey is still a little bit janky, but um, works well enough, I suppose. Uh, the downwards journey is lovely. It's buttery smooth. So let's test that one out. Buttery smooth. You can walk around. It, it just looks really, really great. Um, so yeah, I don't really know how to fix the upward journey. So perhaps you have a suggestion to that. Maybe someone has a, a very simple solution that I'm just not thinking of. Um, but I'd love to hear it. But that's pretty much all there is to it. Do let me know your thoughts on the walk you through how stuff works format. Um, I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, a like is always, of course, much appreciated. Subscribe if you're not already. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.